Thank you. I, I could talk forever about hot dogs, but I'm not going to. Um, it's, I think everybody needs uh, an opportunity to express themselves. You've been listening very patiently for a very long time, and I want to know who's here. Um, so, who here is in the food business? Stand up. Come on, I know you're out there. Okay. Who here gardens? Stand up. Okay, we've got a gardener. I'm, okay, I'm getting crazy. A farmer? Any farmers here? Who here eats? Stand up. Okay, that's just really... A, you can stay standing up. You can swing your arms around. I know I need to. I think rather than talk about um, my experience in the hot dog business, I want to talk about a question that was raised, which is how do we make this affordable? Because until it's affordable, it's not sustainable. And we need to make this movement mainstream. We need to make it not a white tablecloth restaurant or even a white tablecloth cafe or even that level, but something that is in everybody's life every day. And that is where you come in. The challenges really are business challenges. There are lots of fabulous food entrepreneurs out there who are passionate about broccoli and passionate about almond milk and passionate about using their hands to create beautiful things but have no clue about business. They don't know anything about financial instruments. They don't know anything about putting together a five-year plan, sizing the market, figuring out how to turn their passion, their great idea, into a scalable business that can truly move from an elitist little pocket of the very wealthy eating very well and everybody else eating very little. So all of us have been inspired by Jamie Kennedy. All of us have been inspired by the chefs that have been up here talking about what they're doing and how they're doing. But in that, none of you stood up to be gardeners. My guess is that that is not your path to revolution. You here at the school have this incredible opportunity to partner with the food people who so desperately need help in learning how to take their ideas, their passion, their interest into the world to make organic food more affordable for everybody, to make it the, I don't know how it got to be that poison became conventional. So when people say, well, it's organic or it's conventional, and conventional is not, we need to be the new conventional. We need to be default for everything. And so that we don't have these TED Talks that are the few inspiring the many, but rather moving to the next level where we branch out from here where we can talk at a larger level, at an international level. Because it is possible all around the world, there are, there is food, there are people who care about it, and they are looking for young business folks with the skills, the acumen, to take their ideas and make it work. So which among you can see that as your future, becoming an incredible food entrepreneur, business partner like Ari's brother. With Ari, without Ari's brother, there wouldn't be ice cream on the table. We all need an Ari's brother, and I think he only has one. So uh, I just want to leave you with the notion that all of you have the opportunity to be revolutionaries, both in the way you eat every day, how you talk about food and the importance of food that you've heard articulated here, but most importantly, using your interests, your skills, to partner with people who so desperately need them. Again, great chefs rarely know how to put together a P&L, and until they learn how to do that or have somebody who does that, they're going to be in a small kitchen and wondering how many people can they feed when there's so many people who are so hungry. Thanks. One question, or three. <laughs> um, so I really resonate with the idea that this is largely a business problem and not necessarily the technology of good, clean food necessarily, but it's about how to you know, get it out into the world in an easy, accessible way. I double down and say it's also more than a business problem, it's a cultural, societal problem in terms of what the last gentleman said, we're structured around convenience. Right. And so the question for me is like how, how do we inspire more of, how do we or ally with other cultural change agents to 
change the logic by which we basically live our lives. You know, when it comes down to it, real change um, in the food system and in everything else is interdependent. Uh, fast food isn't successful because just because it's cheap. It's because people who have to have two jobs to support their family and pay for their health care and pay for schooling need, do not have time to cook. We need to see change at a very grassroots level where people can are not spending so much of their income on uh, what used to be government functions. I mean, I remember the time when you know the government provided health care, and well, I'm from Canada. Um, <laughs> this I don't know if they told you, but this is a the whole Canadian conspiracy. <laughs> um, but the government used to provide education. I mean, remember those days when they provided education, when they provided transportation, when they provided affordable housing. When all of that disappears and people have to spend more and more of their money on their basic human needs, they have to decide between food and work, and they try to squeeze it all in in a little bun, not in a wrapper. One of the things that Let's Be Frank did was try to recognize that fast food, you know, we sort of talk about it as being fast, slow food. Um, that is the quality of slow food. It's beautiful cattle raised on pasture, uh, raised by people who really care about the planet and their animals and the health of the people, but it comes in a bun. And you can walk and eat it, which is, you know, not how we would love people to eat our hot dogs, but it's, uh, it, it is the reality. So you're right, it has to be accessible, not only financially, but culturally. Again, there are a lot of people who could afford to eat at Shape and Ease and choose not to do so because they would rather eat than go to church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. they don't want that experience. The, um, I think the, one of the great changes to be made uh, in improving the food system and perhaps everything else linked to it is finance campaign reform. Uh, campaign finance reform, sorry. Um, when Coca-Cola can call a senator to change a vote, defining what's allowed to be served in schools. Uh, or I work with the National Park Service, and we, Grand Canyon was five days away from eliminating all bottled beverages and using just water in containers. And they got a phone call from Coca-Cola saying, you know, we don't, that's a really good idea, and we give you $15 million a year to your foundation. And they called the senator from Georgia and say, you know, you need to talk to these people because we give you $15 million a year to the National, Demo you know, the National Republican or Democratic Party. So all of our decisions are still being made by big food, big ag, big farm. And until that stops, we're finding a, a very difficult battle. I'm not supposed to be political at these things, am I? <laughs> Thankfully, the organizers aren't here, so they won't know. <laughs> Thank you so Thank you. much for giving me